Hello. So at the time of recording this, this marks the 10th anniversary of Pete Namlock's death. As such, I thought I'd share with you how I came across Pete's music, how I went on the biggest deep dive of my life into a label, how it changed my life, and brought about 100 things I do. So I suppose this story really starts about 10 years ago. I just moved into this place where I am now. The studio was very different from what it looks like today. But one night I was having problems sleeping. So I opened up the laptop and went to have a look at Matrix Synth. Now I was scrolling through the stories and the demos and everything there, and there was an auction. The auction was for Pete Amlook's synthesizers. And I'd been largely aware of Pete's music up until this point, but I'd never really listened to it that much. This seemed a little strange. I, I just assumed at the time that he was going completely into the box. You know, Pete would change up things from time to time. And I just moved on. So a few days later, I decided to have a look at the actual auction and see if there was anything that I might want. This is where I learned that Pete had actually passed away. Anytime I'd ever read anything about Pete Namlook, he was always mentioned in the same reverence as Klaus Schulze or Tangerine Dream, Cluster, Popel Vu, all of those sort of original kraut rockers. So I always just assumed that Pete was one of the original kraut rockers. Up until this point, I really hadn't listened to any of his music. Actually, that's not true. Uh, the first time I actually heard Pete was on this Klaus Schulze record, or CD, as it was. <laughs> now, while the main composition is all Klaus's work, at least as far as this says, there's a bunch of uh, remixes on CD2, and a huge percent of those are by Pete Namlook. So around the time this came out, I was just starting to get into techno and house and acid, which meant I played the second CD as much as I played the uh, original Klaus CD. I sort of left Pete Namlook's music here. So with any prolific artist such as Klaus or Pete or anybody like that, I can't just listen to a CD or two. I'm a bit of a completist this way. I, I like to... I like to really go on that deep dive. I really want to understand what this artist is about. So as some of the long-term viewers will know, I was building my VCS3 around 2013, 2014. And while I was building the synth, I remembered that Pete Namlook was well known as a VCS3 or Synthy A user, so I decided to um, really start playing some of his work to encourage me to try and get this synth finished. So I started with the Dark Side of the Moog series. First of all, Pete's working with Klaus Schulze, so I already understand Klaus's style and had been listening to Klaus since I was about 16 years old. So I thought this series was the way in, and it was. So I played all of these CDs largely on repeat over the period I was building the VCS3. If you're listening to Klaus's music, you'll recognise that he's developing some of the themes throughout Dark Side of the Moog that'll end up on his solo work as well. So there's a bit of an easy crossover here, and I think you can really hear the work that Pete's doing. So the first CD in this series, which this isn't, starts off with an amazing piece of synthesis. Um, I'm assuming it's a Moog Model 50 or so. I believe Klaus or Pete had a Moog around, had a Moog modular around that time. And wow, it is such an emotive piece. I got the VCS3 finished and I decided now was the time. I really need to, I really need to go on a deep dive. So up until this point, I'm only able to hear Pete's music really through YouTube. So I come across this track, uh, which is called A Million Miles to Earth, which is from this album, From Within, which features both Pete and the amazing Richie Horton. Now, as much as Dark Side of the Moog is an amazing series, it's something that I think I've got multiple copies of. 
this really opened up the floodgate. This, this CD is, this CD is, first of all, unlike anything else I've ever heard Richie Horton do, but at the same time, it has that early techno vibe, but huge ambient soundscapes. You've got to check it out, from within. The next CD I found was Silence. Now, this is a collaboration between Pete Namluk and Dr. Atmo. This is the first time I heard somebody doing the music that I do. The ambient music that I made seemed so obtuse, so, so different to anything else I heard that I, th I thought a lot of it was unusable, unplayable, and really not worth listening to for anybody besides me. So silence completely cemented that I had to go deeper. I didn't realise how deep the catalogue was at this point. So after the time Silence came out, Pete started a record label called Fax. Now Fax was a way for Pete to not only release his own music, but release collaborations with other artists and release techno, house and ambient music from other artists that he found interesting. A lot of amazing artists came through Fax. I believe at the time that Pete died that Fax had released over 500 CDs. So Pete's releases number in the hundreds. And for a lot of people it can be a very impenetrable catalogue to start with. So I really want to challenge you to go and investigate Pete's music and let me know what you think. I'm leaving a list of albums that I would recommend to start off with and series and some of them that I've mentioned today. And I'll provide a link to a label on Bandcamp that has a lot of Pete's music where you can listen to it first. And if you love it, you can download it. The thing for me is without finding Pete's music and finding someone that I could completely, I could completely relate to in the way the compositions were put together that made me feel like, made me feel like my own music had a value to it and through the constant nagging of two of my good friends, it's largely the reason 100 Things I Do even exists. And I had the confidence to actually start sharing some ideas with you guys. I hope you found this video interesting. There's an awesome mini documentary on Peep, which I'll link below. And there's a really good article on Bandcamp. And this goes through how Pete actually started to create his ambient sound and how facts came about. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this encouraged you to go and have a listen to Pete's music if you haven't done so previously, or if you have, Maybe it's time for a revisit. There's currently a reissue of Silence on vinyl at the time I'm doing this video. I don't know if that's sold out now or not, but it's well worth the purchase if still available. As always, thank you for watching and I'll chat to you soon.